So this video has absolutely nothing to do with shoes. However, I couldn't think of a hook for this week's video, so I figured, well, I got some new kicks and nothing like a little consumerism to capture your attention. Speaking of which. Ah, oh, man, great. great. He thinks I'm not going to put it in the video. Oh, All right, now that we got that over with today, I want to share with you how I actually edit my YouTube videos. So I have an editing workflow in Premiere Pro that I use so I can edit my videos faster. So I have a background in filmmaking. And if you are a YouTube creator, then you know the most time intensive process is actually editing your videos. So by using this workflow, you're going to be able to speed up that process and streamline it so you actually know exactly what to do when you get into your editing software. Now, if you're new to YouTube and you're an aspiring creator and you have never done any video work before, you've never shot, you've never edited, this is gonna be a great video for you to watch because it's gonna show you from start to finish how this process works. And before we get into that, I figured I'd show you guys my current overpriced coffee of the day, Soul Grind, because nothing says consumerism like a $5 can of cold brew. What do you say, Scout? You wanna go edit a video? Okay, good talk. All right guys, so let's get into it. So today I'm gonna to be running you through this process in Premiere Pro. However, if you do use Final Cut or even something like iMovie or you edit your videos on your smartphone, you could totally follow this process. It is exactly the same. Keeping in mind that if you're using like iMovie or you're editing on an app on your phone, that you're gonna have a lot more restrictions there because those softwares aren't as sophisticated as Premiere Pro or even Final Cut. Also, I'm gonna be editing a tutorial style video. So if you do make review videos or tutorial videos or anything related to that type of YouTube video, then you can follow this process to a T. However, if you are more of a vlogger and you're creating story style videos, then it's gonna be a little bit different how you build that story, but the process is still pretty much the same. So before we jump into Premiere, let's actually go through these eight steps real quick. So the first step is to prepare your project, then organize the footage, then you actually will build out that timeline. Then you're gonna go into color correcting. Next up is color grading. Then you will add your titles and all of your extras. Then you go into sound effects. And then finally, you go into exporting the file. Okay, so before we even get into Premiere, the first thing we need to do is we need to prepare a project, AKA you need to get your shit in order. So what do I mean by that? So let's say for example, you're editing a video in Premiere and you have this idea to add a poop emoji because why not? Poop emojis are cool. So you hop onto Google, type in poop emoji PNG. That one looks pretty sweet. Let's grab that. So you drag that little guy onto the desktop, put that guy into Premiere Pro. It's looking pretty good. Let's go with that. But then let's say you have some random idea to clean off your desktop because you know you want to be an organized person, right? Nobody likes a dirty desktop. By the way, the amount of JPEG images on Amy's desktop gives me extreme anxiety. Let me know if you agree. Drag that little guy in the trash, but then you come back to Premiere Pro project and this comes up. So the reason why that's happening is that Premiere is actually linking anything that you add, all the footage, all the assets, any media from the location that it found it. So in order to fix this, the best thing you can do is have a streamlined process, which I'm gonna show you here, using a external hard drive. So first thing I do is that I have my external hard drive. I'm gonna click into that. I'm gonna have my own little personal folder. And then within that folder, I have a YouTube. And then for each video, I create its own folder. Then I use a templated organizational structure that I have right here. So we have assets, edits, footage, projects, and thumbnail. So if I'm gonna make a new YouTube video, I'm just gonna make a new folder right here. Let's call this Epic YouTube Video. Then all I have to do is come up to this template file and then just do a copy and paste all of them. Control C, come back down. Where'd you go, little guy? Where'd you go, where'd you go? There you are. And then drag that eye on. Boom, now we're set up to go. Now all you have to do is drag in all of your footage, any of the assets that you're gonna know you're gonna be using. So the music, the sound effects, any visuals like a poop emoji, and you're good to go. Next step on the list is to organize your project. So what we need to do is once we open Premiere, we're gonna go to new project. We're going to name that Epic YouTube Video. Then we're gonna go to browse and follow that same format of saving it in the same place, coming to our hard drive, YouTube, Epic YouTube Video. Then we're gonna save this in the projects folder. Choose, press okay. Now we got ourselves a crispy new Premiere project. So the first step, we're gonna make sure, same as that folder, we're gonna organize everything in Premiere. So we're gonna come down to this little button right here, press a new bin. We're gonna call this footage. Then we're gonna make another one called assets. Then finally, another one called sequence. Then we're gonna drag everything into those specific bins. So all the footage that you use for your video, like this right here, is gonna go into the footage bin. All of the assets, like the poop emoji, is gonna go in the assets. And then the sequence is going to be where we're gonna actually putting that timeline sequence so that we know where it is. The last thing you wanna do is, if you have a sequence and you accidentally delete it, well, if that actually doesn't disappear, it just needs to be organized in a place so you can click back into it. So 
Once we get everything nice and set up, we're organized in our hard drive, we're organized in Premiere Pro. Now we're gonna make a video. So step one is to build out your timeline. So this is a tutorial style video. So I'm gonna start with that A-roll, which is just that main talking headshot. So we're gonna come over to footage, grab this guy and drag it in. So now that we have that in the timeline, the next step we need to do is we actually have to clean that up and make sure that that is nice and organized, getting rid of all of the mess ups, all of the swears and all of the dead space. Now there are many ways you can do this in Premiere, but the easiest way is to use short keys. So what I like to do is I like to come in, I'll listen to the specific video parts with the audio clips, and then I will cut everything out using some short keys, particularly the Q, W, and Z short key. So if I wanna get rid of everything to the left, all of this empty space, I go right to where I want it to cut. And if I press Q, it's going to get rid of everything to the left. And then right here, I'm gonna make a cut pressing Z. And then if I wanna get rid of all this dead space, I just scroll right here press Q again, and it's gonna get rid of everything up until that cut. And the same applies by using W, but it's gonna get rid of everything to the right. So for example, if I make a cut right here, press Z, and then I come over here and I press W, it's gonna get rid of everything to the right. So by using those short keys, it's gonna make it a lot faster than having to go in and using the cut tool to cut, 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 and then having to delete this, and then having to delete this space. So you actually just basically streamline that process and save a lot of time. Now, once you have a timeline built out, the next step is to go into color correcting and color grading. Now, every filmmaker has their own way of going about this, and some people are pretty religious about it. I'm gonna give you the simple way that I do it. So what I like to do is I will find one clip, and since this entire timeline is using the same exact shot, I just need to color correct and color grade one shot, and then I can copy it over to everything else. So the first step is that you wanna make sure that you find a very awkward freeze frame. Let's find one. Um, right about, that one looks good. Then we're gonna work with these specific tools. So first you can go here and press auto and see what that does. Most of the time it's not gonna work. It's gonna do something crazy, but you never know, sometimes it does. So we're gonna go to reset and then we're gonna do this manually. So since this is a dark shot, which is the kind of the energy that I wanted to, I wanted it to look a little bit moody. I'm going to turn the exposure up just a little bit. Then I'm going to come up here and turn the shadows up just a little bit as well. And then because I want to keep that contrasty look, I'm going to turn the blacks down ever so slightly. Come over to the panel right here, click that, press Command C, and I can copy that onto every other shot in the timeline. Now, once you've color corrected, the next step is to do something called color grading. Now, color grading basically is the process of using something called a LUT which stands for lookup table. If you don't know what a lookup table is, it basically is like an Instagram filter or a Lightroom preset. And it's a thing that you can drag on top of your footage to give it a certain look. Now, there are two ways that you can do this. One, you can do the same exact process onto the specific clip down here in the creative panel using this little look tab right here. But what I like to do is actually using something called an adjustment layer. So what I'll do is, is I will come over here, go into asset, then I will come down and click on new item. Then I will come over here to adjustment layer. Then I'll click on that guy, press okay. And I will drag this adjustment layer over the top of that footage. Then what I'll do is I'll add that lookup table to that specific adjustment layer. And the reason I can do that is that if any time I want to get rid of it, I don't have to go through each clip and mess with the actual lumetric color and start from scratch. I can literally just delete this or turn it off. So click on this guy, go to look. I'm gonna use this copper gamut and then we're gonna take the intensity down, let's say 50%. So by doing that, it's very subtle, but you can see the difference is it gives it this little bit of a color and a look to it. All right, so let's summarize so far. So you organize your footage, you got your project set up, you got it all built out in the timeline, made it nice and pretty with some color correcting and color grading. Now it's time to add all the B-roll and all the visuals that you need on top of it. So what I'll do now is I will go through the video and in my assets folder, I'll click into that and I will use all of the B-roll that I need, all of the visuals that I need, and I'll put it on top of that A-roll. A little trick to do for this is if you click into that specific clip on the assembly panel and you scroll through, you press I will make an endpoint and O will make an out point. So that way, if you only want a specific part of that clip, then you can drag that in grabbing this specific little footage panel right here. All right, so B-roll and visuals are done. Next step, sound effects. So what we're gonna do is now we're gonna add any music and any little sound effects that we need, like little pop noises or anything that you wanna use to accentuate the video. So I use the same place to store all of that in our assets folder. So we'll come in, find our music files and start to add that. Now, a little trick is to make sure when you're using music, not to overpower 
the voice or any audio that you're using when talking. So the worst thing that can happen when you're trying to watch a YouTube video is if the music is overpowering the voice audio. So let's say, for example, you're watching a video and you're trying to learn about Bitcoin and there's some very intense German techno music going on and you can't really hear what's going on. You really want to watch the video because you know it's a good video. You think you can learn something about Bitcoin and it's just like you can't really hear what's going on because the audio, that music is so loud. And you just like, gah. So in order to do that, I like to actually get my music from Epidemic Sound. And what I can do is I'll go in, I'll find songs that I like and you only need to actually find a part of the song and then you can actually copy and paste that one part all throughout the video. Let me show you how I do that. So I have the song right here and there's a specific part, which is these four bars that I want to use. So what I'll do is I'll come in, I will make an endpoint using that I and then come over here and make an outpoint using O. What I can do then is come into the beginning of the video and just drag that clip in. Now, obviously notice it's not going to be for the whole entire video, but what I'm going to do is, is that I'm going to adjust the audio and then I'm going to copy this clip across the whole entire video. So I can do that by coming into the audio clip mixer panel right here. And if I play the video, it's going to show me where the levels are. So obviously the music is way too loud and the audio is not loud enough. So if I go to the music and drag it down to make sure that it's about half the levels or not even less than the actual audio of the voice. Now that the levels are mixed and they're good to go, what I can do is grab this audio, hold option and drag it out and that's going to copy it. Then I'm going to match it to the end here. Then to make sure that that flows, what I can do is use something called a cross dissolve. So if I press shift seven, it's going to bring me over to my effects panel and then I can come to audio transitions, crossfade, constant power. And there we go. Now that's going to flow evenly. Now that I've done that, I can grab these two clips and by using that option hold and I can copy these over, make sure that that fits that little edge. Make sure I drag a constant power on top of those two guys. And then I can just actually compound, add all of these and keep dragging them out. And just like that, we have put together a epic YouTube video. So let's summarize that. First, we organize all of our footage on our hard drive. Then we opened up a new Premiere project, made sure everything was nice and organized and labeled in there. Then we built out our timeline. Then we color corrected, color graded it. Then we put all of the visuals and anything we want on top of that. Then we came in and made sure that we added all of the sound effects, made sure that everything was leveled so that the music and the voice audio was not overpowered. Then the next step is to actually export the project. So in order to do that, we're going to come up here and go to file export media. Now, once we're here, we want to make sure that we're saving this in the right place. So we're going to go to output name. We're going to title this guy Epic YouTube video, and we're going to make sure we save it to the right spot. So we'll go into our hard drive, into those folders, into Epic YouTube video, and then into edits. Press save. And then the last thing you can do, this isn't necessary, but it is going to make sure that you're exporting this at the highest quality is in the video panel. We're going to come down here. We're going to make sure we press render at maximum depth. Then we're going to scroll down to the bitrate settings, go to VBR two pass. Then we're going to set the target bit rate to 35 and the maximum bit rate to 40. Press export. And if you made it this far in the video, congratulations, you have a longer attention span than I do. Do me a favor, if you found this video helpful, hit that like button, it helps with the YouTube algorithm. And the best part is, it's free. If you want more videos on how to make YouTube videos, you can check out the playlist at the end of this one, and I will see you guys next week. Peace.